In an emergency, you call 911. 911, it's emergency, please fire medical. And that call goes here to the 911 center at state police headquarters, where an operator routes it to an appropriate agency. But in Rhode Island, thousands of people who tried to get through last year heard this. You have reached 911. Please stay on the line. Put on hold at a time when they needed help the most. Nearly 13,000 people who called 911 last year, that's 250 calls a week, had to wait an average of 11 and a half seconds for someone to pick up. Now, 11 seconds may not seem like a lot, but during an emergency. You have reached 911. Please stay on the line. And that's what it felt like for Diane Belknap, owner of the Greenville Inn in Smithfield. On a Sunday evening last month, an elderly customer fell in the foyer of her restaurant. Because of the high volume of calls at 911, she didn't even get the recording, just a ringing line. And I saw this woman laying there bleeding on her. She was face first, laying flat on the ground on our tile floor. So I ran to the podium to call 911, and a waitress said, I already called 911. They didn't answer, and I said, well, you must have called the wrong number. They always answer. So Belknap called 911 herself and let it ring 10 times with no answer, then hung up and decided to call the Smithfield police directly. She had the number written down from the days before 911 existed. Smithfield Police, dispatch Lonigan. Yes, this is Diane Belknap from Greenville Inn Restaurant. I can't get through to 911. I have a woman that just fell in my foyer, laying flat on the floor, bleeding out of her mouth. I need a rescue over here, ASAP. Okay, Diane, what's your address there? 36 Smith Ave, Greenville Inn. 36 Smith. Okay, I'll have a rescue. Thank you. All right. Still took 15 minutes for someone to get here because we had to make three phone calls instead of one. The call center is supposed to have six to eight people, depending on the shift. But on some shifts over the past month, it's been down to three. There were four people the day we visited last week. The agency has not been able to fill vacancies because of a state hiring freeze, and it's blown through a good portion of its overtime budget to cover the shifts as a result. The Hummel Report has also learned that one 911 operator recently resigned, in part because of the stress and frustration every shift of callers being put on hold as a result of the short staffing. It wasn't supposed to be this way when 911 was established in 1988. That's because there's a surcharge on old telephones, a dollar a month for landlines, and a dollar twenty-six for cell phones. It helps pay for state-of-the-art tracking equipment that offers satellite pictures like these when someone calls in. This year, that surcharge generated $15 million, but 911 sees only a third of it. In fact, 911's budget has been cut from just over $6 million five years ago to $4.6 million this year. Meanwhile, the number of calls over that period has increased 20%. So why isn't the money that we all pay every month going where it's needed? Because the General Assembly for years has been grabbing it to pay for other things. We need the bodies. Without the bodies, during particularly high uh, call volume times, calls will go into queue. Ray White is the acting colonel of the state police and commissioner of public safety, which now oversees 911. White says it is a difficult balance between budget cuts and public safety. But I never want to have our people skimp on staffing personnel when it will affect the needs of the public. Well, it appears from what I've seen that it is affecting the needs of the it, public now. It has. You are correct. 911 mm -hmm. is such an essential function of state government. And I'm just curious your reaction when you hear the 250 calls a week are going on hold. It, it's, it concerns me. It does. And I, and I put myself in the shoes of someone who may be calling. If I'm calling on behalf of myself or a loved one who's injured, you call. Hopefully, you, know, you can get to 911. You make that call. You want it to be answered, and then you want it to be answered in a timely fashion. Should the people in the state of Rhode Island have confidence in the 911 system? The 911, let me be very clear, that our 911 personnel are top notch. We have a state of the art facility, which I discussed with you earlier. But you can have state of the art facility and not adequate staffing, 
and then, then that diminishes the, the ability in, of, of that center. I don't think the public should have um, uh, a, a lack of faith in the 911 center, but they should have some concerns that there may be at times that calls will go into queue and their, their calls may not be answered in the, in, the, in the timely fashion that they would expect it would be answered. So there should be some concern in that aspect. Colonel White says they have asked the governor's office for more staffing. All we can do is make the request and demonstrate to them the need for those positions. The approval process uh, is out, outside of uh, my control. House Speaker Gordon Fox tells the Hummel Report he has asked the House Finance Committee to explore the issues we are raising about funding, staffing, and calls on hold as part of this session's budget hearings. Diane Belknap says that while 911 has worked in the past, this time it failed her. I said, I don't know what's going on, but thank God I didn't have an armed gunman in here shooting someone, and I only had one phone call, and it was to 911, and no one answered. Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.